welcome to the stage, Sarah Shockey. Yeah! Keep it going for Eric. Yeah! Woo! Uh, I'm Sarah Shockey, and some of you may know that tonight, a uh, big get that we had for uh, like maybe a month or two was Colt Cabana was going to come and tell stories, but... Last minute, he got booked to wrestle, of all things, so uh, instead of having Colt here, I figured I would tell a story about Colt, so here you go. I wasn't allowed to watch pro wrestling when I was little. Also banned in our conservative Christian household were Rugrats, Woody Woodpecker, Growing Pains, and Full House. (laughs) Plus, wrestling seemed like a thing for boys, so I never tempted fate by watching it. But I was always fascinated by wrestlers. I loved American Gladiators, and when I saw The Rock in The Scorpion King in theaters in 2002, I was enthralled by it. (laughs) Something about the combination of muscles and acting pulled him into my brain for the rest of high school and beyond. (laughs) He was a real wrestler. In 2010, I was somehow asked to perform in the Second City 24 Hours Letters to Santa benefit show. 24 hours of rotating improv shows. I had only been doing comedy for a year, and I was still visibly overexcited every time I took the stage, but also, in the way young 20-somethings do, I felt like I deserved to be there. (laughs) And I wanted everyone in the room to see how great I hoped I was, though deep down, I was very afraid to be there. I wore red for Christmas time, I showed up early, I sat in the dark until it was my hour to perform with a group of established actors and improvisers. The star of our slot was Colt Cabana who told stories of being on the road and in the world of wrestling, and afterward we did improv based off the stories. I was in awe of him. He looked different than every single person in the room. Tanner. Stronger. (laughs) Better. (laughs) He kind of looked like someone from an advanced civilization that, like, knew more than we. (laughs) And in another token young person move, instead of admiring him from afar, I wanted him to be impressed by me, too. (laughs) So I burst in to join him in the first scene after the storytelling part. As hilariously and sexily as I could, I begin with, wow, looks like it's just you and me here after hours in the Shed Aquarium, just the two of us. (laughs) I don't know what I was expecting. I guess I was hoping for some bold-ass flirting, you know, in front of the smattering of people who came to the 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. shift of improv comedy before the holidays. (laughs) In response to my improv advances, Colt Cabana intently looked at the fish I made up and asked about the different species and types. (laughs) Someone tagged in to pretend to be a fish with him, and that was the end of my first brush with wrestling. (laughs) If you would have asked me that day, I would have told you that I'd probably never get into wrestling, even though it seemed cool. But wrestling kept finding me. In 2012, I dated a guy who was a diehard fan, so I would look up wrestlers and draw pictures of them with captions like, I pedigree that I'm a good wrestler, parentheses Triple H. And then in 2014, I dated another guy who never expressed interest in wrestling whatsoever until the day he announced he wanted to start watching Monday Night Raw at a local bar. I went along, and before I knew it, I was tweeting out that I would love to commentate pro wrestling. One of my friends responded and invited me to do just that. The next thing I knew, I was hired as a commentator by Resistance Pro Wrestling in the Chicago suburbs. Three shows in, Colt Cabana was brought in for a show. I chatted with him and reminded him of that first improv meeting. (laughs) He laughed and told me that he had also been nervous to do the improv. I was still nervous about doing commentary and backstage interviews, but it felt cool to reconnect with someone that I admired so much. A couple of years later, I met my podcasting partner and now boyfriend, Marty DeRosa. (laughs) (laughs) And through my involvement in comedy and pro wrestling... He and Colt were already close friends and comedy partners, so I kept running into him. Instead of seeing him as this mythical wrestling being, I started to see him as someone real and down-to-earth, but in that light, perhaps even more impressive. He's someone who works hard every day of his life. He's wrestled in Japan, he has a recurring show at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival, and in a few days, he's heading to wrestle in Shanghai. All because he pushed himself to become one of the best in the world. He's made connections with fans that have changed lives for the better. He's not only a wrestler, he's a link to fans and the personalities they love, a liaison between dreams and reality. A few nights ago, I had the privilege of collaborating with Colt on a project. He's making Marty a singlet for a wrestling debut he's having in April. (laughs) (laughs) They're going to 
be tag team partners. And he handmade this singlet. Every letter cut from fabric by us and stitched by him. It was a concentrated look at the effort he's carefully put into his whole career, thread by thread, all because he wanted to make something special for a friend. In eight years, I went from sharing the stage with a stranger to sharing a craft night with a friend. For me, it's been a lesson in patience, of letting things progress on their own time. Had I really wowed him for a single moment doing improv years ago, whatever joy I would have gotten from that would be long since gone. Instead, I did things I liked, worked hard like him, and found that there were many others doing the same thing. And in this case, he was a wrestler. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Sarah Shockey, everybody. Boom, boom, Cocabana. Boom, boom, Cocabana. Boom, boom, Cocabana. It's Cocabana.